Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and with me today is my co-host, Rosa Owens, and we thank you for watching our broadcast today. And those of you who will be watching the show, uh, it'll be probably a couple of months uh, after we've taped. Um, violence is, is rampant uh, now in the world and, and in America, unfortunately. Um, th there's a spirit. And uh, it's in the hearts and minds of people uh, that are well-known, people that are not well-known, um, of uh, Antichrist. It's an Antichrist spirit. It's a murder spirit. Uh, the, the spirit hates Jesus, hates God, hates you, hates me, whether you're a believer in Christ or not. And uh, that spirit comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, we saw that spirit, a uh, demonic spirit, uh, and, and a man that was possessed by it, uh, sending packages uh, to uh, people that are uh, opposed of the um, uh, the views of, of uh, the Republicans, and uh, the man is totally possessed. Um, and uh, thank God they got him. Uh, also, we just seen another Hitler spirit, uh, demonic spirit. Um, went into a synagogue and, and cursed the Jews and uh, said all Jews need to die and uh, killed 11 people. Uh, as of now, uh, six were wounded, uh, two were officers that were very serious. We pray that God would touch their bodies and that they would be healed. And uh, many of the, the people that died were elderly people, a 97-year-old person, 85, 80, 87, 65-year-old doctor who was trying to help people and he died. It, it's a spirit uh, and, and, and the Bible is 100% true and uh, towards the coming of the Lord uh, it's going to get worse and worse uh, because the, the Bible which is the only 100% book that was ever written was written by God through uh, the uh, Spirit of the Holy Spirit uh, through holy men of God um, is, is being shunned around the world as it's a, just a piece of, 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 it's a fiction book and it's a piece of trash. And uh, the Bible, uh, among other things, teaches about in the last days how it's going to be. Um, Christ is the only answer to give you peace in your heart. <clears throat> you know not when you're going to have to answer to the Lord and, and to die and leave the face of the earth here. Uh, those people that were going to um, worship their God uh, in the service, never thought that they would be murdered. And people say, well, it's not going to happen to me. They don't lock their doors. Or it's not going to happen to me uh, that uh, I'll have a, a burglar come in. Or uh, I, I'm going to keep shooting up mar uh, heroin because uh, I'm not going to die. Or I'm going to continue to drink. I'm not going to get the DTs and dies. Only God knows. But without Christ in your life, you can't make heaven because he died for our sins. Choose Jesus today, and your life will be changed like our guest today. Rosa, would you like to introduce our guest, please? Yes, Matthew McDermott. Welcome to our program. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Joe. How are you mm. doing today? I'm great. Thank you very much. Praise God. Aren't we glad that we have Jesus in our life now, that we don't have to just know him appear, that we have that peace. Peace of mind, yes. Right, but we did, did not always <coughs> have that. So. When you were young, you were brought up in a, in a Catholic faith you were sharing yes. with me. And tell us about that. You used to go to church with your parents. I used to go to church with my parents. Um, <clears throat> and then one of my mother's friends from the school that she worked at, a parochial school, taught me to play guitar. And then she invited me to sing over at the church when I was 10 years old. So you were very involved. I was involved, yes. I enjoyed it. I, Quite a bit. Yes, and then what happened? Did you continue going in your middle I, in your middle school years? And I continued going till um, I just decided that I wanted to see what the world was about. At a, at a young age. At a young age. <laughs> How did you come to that uh, recognition, my Um, it was more of a feeling than anything else. It was just um. I have to say it's the call of the wild, you know, that just that I was walking over to church one day 
and I just didn't feel like going, so I didn't go. Mm. He was driven by feelings. <laughs> and and how, how old uh, were you probably at that time? Um, probably around uh, 13. 13. See, the devil doesn't care. You know, Hitler said, give me your children until they're 12, and sure. I'll give them back to you. Well, because when he gets you there, brainwash. That's right. And then you, 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 uh, you couldn't tell the difference. If he said that's black and it's really blue, you know, they'll say, no, it's black. Right. And, and that's what happened. You know, they had that. So you followed those feelings. You stopped going. How did your mother react to that? Um, basically, she didn't. She didn't really say anything about it. Um, mm. She gave me my head, let me do what it is that I wanted to do. And uh, I started hanging out with a friend, um, and we would uh, get high. And his his family was pretty lenient about stuff like that. His father was anyway. Um, what about your father? My father and my mother divorced when I was ten years old. Um, you, you know, That's Matt. Um, you say you hang, hung out with this fellow. Mm -hmm. Was he your age or a My little age. older? And the father was lenient, lenient yeah. to him getting high. Yeah. And, and, and Rosie, you want to know something that's sad? Back then, it's, that's like not, not the norm. That was like, you know, an exception. An exception. But today, they were young. today, now with marijuana being legal and stuff like that, it's like, unless the parents are grounded and rooted in religion, uh, even even just religion, not necessarily right with wrong, Christ, morals. right and wrong, yes. you're going to say, no, that's it. You're not doing it. <clears throat> right. You know, um, and so when you were going to church, uh, Matthew, um, did you ever hear the gospel being preached about Jesus, about being born again? Um, yes, I did, but I didn't listen very clearly because I was explaining to Rosa um, on the way over here, it was all about me. You know, I was all about me and me playing the guitar and me singing the songs and mm. being the center of attention. And yeah, I, I was not paying mm -hmm, attention right. to what was really being Ten played. years old, yeah. he's in there, he's right. singing and playing the guitar. That's right. And, 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 and I, we could understand that. So when you said you started to get high, was it drinking? Was it smoking marijuana? What was the, that you started out on? Drinking started first. And it didn't last that drinking, right? The, the mm -hmm. drinking, I... I got caught, so I stopped doing it for a couple of years, but I went back to it in high school. Mm -hmm. Were you able to finish high school? No, I got my GED. Mm. So, so you, you were drunk, or what was the problem? I was, I was drinking, and I, I was a daydreamer. You know, when I was in class, um, I would just look out the window, never listen to, to anything. And uh, it got to the point, I lived right across the street from the high school, and I would cut class for the whole half a day. I would go maybe in for the, no, in the morning I would cut class. And friends would come over in their study periods, and when they had free periods, they'd come over. And we weren't drinking in the morning then. I hadn't started drinking in the morning. I never really drank in the morning except once, but that was on the way. But where did you get this alcohol? Was it in your home? Um, no, initially it was. Um, but uh, I worked in a deli. Okay. And so we would, and the drinking age back then was 18, so I was a lot, lot younger. And, uh, but you were able to get the, the beers and whatever you drank. Beers mostly, yeah. Right. So you, um, how, did, how did your mom react to this? Did she keep you living at home? or She kept me living at home. Um, and did then, she know you were having trouble with alcohol? I think she knew I was drinking. Mm. What what happened, uh, Math, that caused it to escalate? Cause um, y you never ca you start out little, little, right? But then uh, Satan comes in, and he always escalates. You need more. You know, more, more, more. Well, was it oh, was things. it other fellows that you hung out with? Was it peer pressure, or how, how did that how did that escalate? It happened when I got my own place to live. Okay. You know, then there was a lot more freedom. And I didn't have to worry about hiding the alcohol from my mm -hmm. mom, you know, and I could just drink as I, as I pleased. And I had a job, and it was enough to cover the apartment. It was a room, really, not an apartment. And uh, it was just enough to be able to get high the way I wanted to get high. And uh, my friends all had the same agenda. We all just wanted to drink and party and hang out together. 
Mm. And it wasn't a pleasant situation with your mom, was it? She had to, she actually threw you out of the house. How did she do that? At, at one point in time, she came up stairs to the bedroom where I was laying, sleeping, and I was terribly hungover. It was one of the worst hangovers I ever had. Um, and she woke me up, and I was just, oh, I just want her to go away. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she asked for her rent, and I said, I'm not paying you rent. And she said, oh? I said, no, I'm not going to pay you rent. So she went downstairs, and she called the cops. It was a terrible thing, too, because one of the, one of the police officers that came to remove me from the house was one of my best friends in high school. Whoa. Wow. So he, he, it, it was kind of very embarrassing. Mm. And I, I left. I lived right across the street from the high school. I walked up the high school hill to the back of the high school, sat down on the curb, and I cried. Mm. Um, it wasn't the only time in my life that I would be crying. But mm. I, I cried because I felt that that was really hard. But fortunately, I knew of a place that could give me a room. And that's when I, my drinking really started to take off. Like I said, I lived right across the street from the deli. Mm -hmm. And I closed the place down. So we would buy... I had a charge account there, so I would just charge off the beer, mm. and we'd walk out the back door with the, with the beer and go party with that. Mm. Did 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 um, the drugs besides the al alcohol? Because alcohol is a drug. Uh, did anything like marijuana or cocaine or any of that stuff uh, enter into your life too? Yes, especially later on. And, and so, what, what, do you, do you remember what what brought that on? Were you not satisfied with? just alcohol did you want to experience it like when you had the feeling to go mm. out into the world did yeah. you have a feeling that i, I need to try mm. something else um yes but it pretty much came from a friend the nice friends yeah. <laughs> well we enjoyed each other's company sure. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yes, you sure. Did. get high, for more, uh, get high. <laughs> right out of out of out of touch with reality right yeah and so what did this nice friend of yours uh well say? we we got involved with marijuana. That was the big thing, and hashish. Mm, hash, uh, yeah. uh, later on, f we, we proceeded into um, cocaine, and like I told you before, acid. Mm. Um, Did you have money to do all this? Um, I made sure that I had money, yeah. Yeah, and there's a way that you can make sure that you have money. And it's, it's, not, it's not prohibitively in expensive. It, it's, not, it's not that hard to get what you want for mm -hmm. a, I should say reasonable sum yeah if you know you can bargain whatnot so yeah. so here it is um, th they legalize marijuana now uh, mm. in, in in this country um, a matter of fact in Canada now uh, in this country a lot of it's legal for medical purposes in Canada uh, it's not o only for medical purpose you could just smoke pot 24 hours a day as a former marijuana smoker, what do you th say about uh, this, what they're doing over here? I think it's probably not a good idea because you, you're going to have people, probably people buying marijuana for people who are younger. Um, and, and also they have the need to probably do stronger drugs after a while. After a while, yeah. yeah it's going to lead to stronger drugs. Yeah. And as you get older, uh, they say, the medical field, not right now, but as you get older, the, it fries your brain. Dementia, you know? probably. It's so basically just uh, it's a, another attack of Satan to destroy people's right, minds right. so that they become robots. You know, because when you're drinking, when you're drugging, you're a robot. You know, you're a robot. And you're having a good time for yeah. the moment, but then destruction comes because I, were you able to hold a job after a while? Not at the end. Not at the end. Not what the happened end. to you? Um, I uh, was kind of having a silent war with my empl employer mm -hmm. um, because I was not, I, I was a service attendant at a deli, you know, so I had to be smiles and giggles with people, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't feeling that way in the morning when I got into there. So they started cutting back my hours and then I started getting angrier and angrier and the angrier I got, the more they cut back my hours till I finally had no job. Mm. And... Uh, that was one of the points in my life where I decided I was going to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was going to jump off the Croton Dam. So I started walking up there. And the whole way up there, I was just praying to God that he would give me the courage to throw myself off the wow. dam. When I got there, I looked down. I said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was too scary. Too, too scary. <laughs> and I ended up going to live with a friend. 
and I mooshed it off my friend for a while to the point where his mother was like, enough is enough. That's you right. got you to gotta get a place outside of here. And that's when I got um, a decent job and a man who was able to clean me up a little bit, um, give me some decent work clothes mm -hmm. to work in. Dom's Friendly Service was the name of the place. And it was a great gas station. I enjoyed my work there. Um, but did it last? It lasted for... Um, Till I stopped drinking. When I stopped drinking, then I wanted... To, friends of mine who had stopped drinking, they had a place on Spring Street. Um, and I wanted to go live with them, which mm -hmm. means I would have to get on public assistance. So I quit my job and went and got on public assistance. And I've been on public assistance ever since. But like I told you on the way over here, that's looking brighter now because I'm working on building my resume and soon be putting in job applications at different places. But before you get you got to this point, you suffered a lot. You 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 were telling me that about you hearing different voices. I was attacked by by voices when I was living in uh, Montrose. Um, just to, one day, this apparition of a young female sprite a appeared in front of me, and then other voices followed in behind her. And uh, they oppressed me for quite some time. Actually, you saw, you saw. A visual, yeah. A visual of, 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 a, of a woman. Mm -hmm. And Satan does bring right. demonic stuff, you know. Uh, uh, I, I, you're probably sure glad today, Matt, that God didn't answer your prayer. To you jump know, off. <laughs> to yes. Ju oh, God. <laughs> to jump off, you know. Uh, that, that's a so good, God was that's watching a good prayer because God, yeah. God was watching uh, right. over you. And... Um, see, the enemy, he, he starts out with a little, right. and it ends up a monster where you can't take it, it anymore. Gets out of control, because yeah. you went from marijuana to other drugs to uh, acid uh, that yeah. really destroys your mind. Yeah, and, and so uh, how, how did, how did um, um, your relationship with Jesus come about? Um, I was sober. And again, I had that mental illness that I had when it attacked me. It made me not able to work very, very well. And um, one time I was working at the A and P. This is kind of funny, but uh, I was working at the A and P, and I was looking at the whole salad case. And my job was to take each one out, turn it over, and add more salad. To, to it when it needed to be done. Mm. And it just seemed like way too much for me to do. <laughs> so I went into the back room and I sat down on the ground and just sat there. And the manager of the place came back and said, what are you doing? And I said, sitting. He goes, go home, don't come back tomorrow. Wow. So um, that was when I, I lost that job. And I also lost the job that I had with the, the county. I was working two jobs, but I lost them both. And um, that's when I ended up going on public assistance. Mm. And, and, and was it came? there? Yeah, so, sorry. Was it there that you, that somebody introduced you to Jesus Christ? It was um, when I became homeless, and I was in the yes. That was right after that is when I got introduced to Jesus. Ken Who? was his name. He ran the VOA Volunteers of America shelter at the airport when it was there, and um, like I told you on the way over here, there was. I had a vision of a spirit antagonizing me on the ground, and I tried to step on it. But when I did so, I hyperextended my knee, and I hurt my knee really badly, and I was crying, um, which wasn't the last time that I'd be crying. But um, the manager of the VOA, he asked me into his office, and he asked me, he said, do you know Jesus Christ? And I said, no. He said, would you like to? And I said, yes. And he gave me the sinner's prayer to say. and. Um, I've been saved ever since then, and my life has been amazingly um, tranquil, just very tranquil. You know, there's been some ups and some, some downs, but Jesus has given me the ability to cope. meet those mm -hmm. situations and cope with them. But now, Matthew, you sang in church. You sang in the Catholic Church with your guitar. You went to service. What, what was different this time? Um... Because you, you were... The, the desperation, like, the des right. to, to find out 
that I was, um, for lack of a better word, inhabited with spirits. Some of them good were fighting for, for my, my welfare, but many of them were bad. Mm -hmm. And the, I, that just compromised my integrity so bad. It smashed me to, right. to, to like smithereens that I was someone who had that problem. problem. And it's so sad, Joe, that you have to wait. We, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people wait until we totally down and out. Well, uh, see, the, the, the spirits come when you open up yourself. Right. And, and, and in Matthew's case, he opened himself up to the things that the world says give you fun, right. give you happiness. But there's demons behind them. There's demons behind the alcohol. There's right. demons behind the different types of drugs, right? And what do they do? They come in because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a real world of unseen, real world of supernatural. And people who aren't saved don't understand that. And so it's these demons that are in an individual that cause them to have these uh, traumatic situations, oppression and depression. Right. But see, the thing is, is that Matthew, when he said, uh, you want Jesus, now Matthew could have thought of himself in church, whatever like that, and I don't want Jesus, it did nothing for me. But he was desperate. He didn't need uh, you know, salvation, you know, he and, didn't need deliverance. And, 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 and now, now he did. Now you did, and it's probably like night and day, your life now, Matt. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the, Reception that God gave me in the church was absolutely tremendous. The people that I went, I, I knew my sister would be thrilled to know that I was saved because she was a saved Christian. And uh, I went up to her church and I told her, and she invited me up to the ministry there on the on the altar. And uh, I stayed there for a while. And the people in that church were just so nice to me. They made made my Christian walk a little bit of heaven. Mm -hmm. on earth, you know. And I'm sure she was praying for you all along, Matthew. I think she so. knew that you were struggling with all these drugs. She's been a staunch right. uh, prayer warrior in yeah, my life for a long time. Right. So God used yeah. her to you know to to save Matthew through her prayers and her faith. Now, her yeah, now because uh, you were at uh, ten years old involved with the guitar and involved with singing right which God put into your heart to do. You didn't know it, but God gives us all our gifts and all our talents. Yes. Um, have you been using that gift and talent today in church? Um, not too long ago, I sang once on, on the uh, altar at um, Master's Hand, um, but Opal and I want to integrate it more. So yeah. you do you part of the uh, the worship team? I'm part of the worship team there, right? Yeah. And I did have the guitar up there once before, and it went well. Mm. And uh, I'm just waiting to see what happens and how it develops. And uh, I'm sure God is going to make you use it again for His glory this time, knowing that you're worshiping the living God that set you free. So how long, Matthew, has it been that you've been clean from the uh, the, the stuff that you couldn't wait to get? At the uh, at the delicatessen. <laughs> it's been since 1993. 93. So uh, it's about uh, 25 years. That's a long 25 time. 25 mm -hmm. years free. Free. You know, w with the help of the Holy Spirit. Right. You see, and 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 it's such a great thing to know that there's hope. Yes. No matter what's no going matter what you're on doing, what in you're your taking. life, Rosa, right? Th there's hope. Now, it's not an easy road. I mean, you had to work by faith many times, right? Yes. Through all these years. So, you know. But you've seen God's hand yes. provide for you, right, Matthew? Right. Absolutely. One thing that I've learned that's been very, very helpful is to take life one day at a time. Right. Because without that, I'm looking ahead at years of not drinking. That's right. And that's something that I could never do. But today, I can okay. stay away from a drink for one day and be grateful at the end of the day with a prayer and wake up in the morning with a prayer to stay away from it. So no matter what people are doing out there today because they want, you know, maybe they're hurting and they're doing, like you, alcohol, drugs, there is hope. Absolutely. There the, is and hope. the only hope really is in Jesus Christ because he's the one mm -hmm. that could change us and clean us 
and make us walk in that peace that and, we don't need those drugs anymore. And, and you're in your right mind. Yeah. Your mind is clear and your Thank mind you. is free. Right. And, and, and um, God has his hand on you and he has a plan and a purpose for your life, Matthew. And like you said, you know, there's a song that we sing, One Day at a Time, Sweet Jesus. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, one day at a time. That's all I'm asking for you, you know, and that's, and right. that's what it is. And uh, what, what, what about with your family? Because you have other siblings. You have siblings. Uh, they must have seen a tremendous change in your life, too. They have. Mostly it's, it's with my sister that I have a much improved relationship. But there's a marked improvement with my brothers, Paul, Mark, and Larry. Yeah. I, um, I enjoy being with my family today, and it's I'm not a, a fixture on the keg anymore, you know. Mm. Yeah, you're not a fixture. Right. You're, you're not, well, we have to take Matthew along. Right. But in, instead of that, because of the change through Jesus Christ, it's that they enjoy oh, we're glad yeah. to have you uh, as you are now. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a blessing, a major blessing. And, and you have that peace because uh, what you have is real as opposed to the drugs and the alcohol. Uh, uh, they, they, at that time, you know, they make you feel a little comfortable uh, in an unreal world, but yet then after you're out of that, you're, you go in turmoil. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, and, and so uh, when, when the Lord has touched you, Right. I'm sure that you've had an opportunity, Matthew, to share with some people about the Lord. I have. And, and the thing is, is that because you have found something that's real, that's authentic, mm -hmm. and you want to give it out. And I, I did manage to, um, um, how should I say, because it isn't me that did it. But I, I brought someone yeah. to the Lord at the hospital that I was attending. Well, praise God. Uh, God it was good. a beautiful feeling. But I have to pray for her because she's been real stubborn. I said, come to church. And she's like, no, Matthew, I have to work two jobs. And wow. I'm just like... I'm but just, you, you planted the seed, Matthew. So God is going to do the rest. He'll do the right? watering. Yeah, well, thank you so much for sharing the love of Christ with us and your deliverance. Well, thank you for having me here. Thank you, Matthew. Praise yes, God. Praise God. God is good. Amen. And his All mercies endure forever. You know, uh, Matthew got what he didn't deserve. He got the love of God. All of us, we get what we don't deserve. Jesus Christ, he died on the yes. cross for you and me. Hallelujah. Receive Christ in your heart. Ask him to change your life, and he will like Matthew. You'll be born again. Thank you for watching our broadcast today.